I, I must say uh, the testimony uh, that all of you have given has, <laughs> has um, told me much I did not know about how innovation is proceeding, notwithstanding anything that happens in the Congress. It just looks like it is happening and, and that states, localities have, are making it happen. So I, I, and I find it very exciting. I couldn't tell, and maybe I could begin with Mr. Bott, whether we are, since the, the, the thousand flowers look like they're blooming out there already, and I'm trying to find what role Congress should play in uh, facilitating this new mobility, uh, transportation mobility of, around the country. Uh, for example, typically, the federal government has a role in safety. And so when we think about uh, automatic, uh, autonomous vehicles, we we, we have to focus on that. We have to think about taxpayer um, dollars. Um, essentially, are we in a period of experimentation where the federal government sh will be irrelevant when we do the next s surface transportation bill? Or should we be thinking about ways uh, to incorporate the kind of innovations you are describing into our bill. For example, just to take at the local level here in the nation's capital. Uh, the streets are very crowded, so everybody likes to get an Uber or a Lyft when they want to. But the streets are already crowded, and almost anybody can use his or her private car for Uber or Lyft. At the same time, the... Uh, investment by the Congress and the localities in transit has been uh, so meager that our subway system was falling apart. So what the city tri is doing, uh, because it's got to limit the number of cars out there, is it is putting some tax taxes on Uber and Lyft in order to help pay for the transportation system underground because it's got to keep both going and yet it's got to get some of those cars off the street. So when, when, so when I see what's happening in the nation's capital, I'm wondering what should we be doing as we prepare for the next surface transportation bill? Is anything you're saying part and parcel of what should be uh, in a uh, bill, should be facilitated by bill? Uh, should be encouraged by a bill. Uh, I'm talking about the next surface transportation bill. Looks pretty clear that it won't look a lot like the last one, which was all about roads and bridges and trucks and cars. So if the federal government has a role uh, through its, uh, trans its uh, five or six year transportation bills, uh, you could help us to learn what the innovations you have described could be incorporated into the next bill. So any of your ideas, beginning with you, Mr. Bott, and any of the rest of you, I'd be most informed by your ideas. Uh, I mean, or just should we just let it happen out there and just leave it all alone? Uh, thank you, uh, um, uh, Ranking Member Nor Nor Holmes Norton. I, uh, I, I think that it is happening. And um, you can see across the country, and, and we have members who are states, who are cities, who are private sector members, who are research institutions. And so it is happening. I do think there is a role for the federal government to play to ensure uniformity across the country. I think that the, the FAST Act uh, began a nice transition, uh, opened up some um, opportunities for, uh, for uh, jurisdictions to use some federal funding. I think that... Um, there are a, a couple of bills that are looking at the autonomous vehicles, one in the House, one in the Senate, that I think that um, it would be good to get a national framework around safety. Safety is our number one priority. It would be good to not have 50 different states and 400 cities all doing something a little different. Um, I do agree with you that um, the, the approach to moving people, uh, you know, we, we used to talk about moving cars, and now I think it's about moving people and data uh, and freight. 
and this is a little different uh, in terms of how we approach the next bill. So it is one that needs to be multimodal, and uh, I will stop there and see if anybody else has any other ideas they'd like to add. Ms. Castillo? I, th I think the federal government absolutely needs to be involved. My concern, if you're not, is that the rural systems will be left behind because everybody will focus then again on the urban systems. And I understand congestion. I, I know that that is something that is absolutely needs to be um, handled and taken care of. But there are a lot of people in the rural areas, they need transportation just as much as those people do, even though they're less congested, they still have places to go. And I think there is a place for autonomous vehicles in those areas and more technology. Um, it's easier for us to get things done sometimes in the rural areas. I just have to get approval by my board to say, this is the way we want to go and we figure out the funding and go on and just get it done. So there are some, some pluses for having um, innovation in rural areas, um, but I absolutely do think that the federal government needs to stay involved, if nothing else, to look out for the rural areas and to ensure that all autonomous vehicles are held to the same safety standards. Thank you. Y yes, Mr. Waska. Uh, Ranking Member Norton, great question. I have a, a couple of points. One, sometimes regulations will, meaningful regulations will get in the way of innovation. So you have to kind of steer clear of that, understand what that technology will do. I think in the area of a low-speed shuttle, we, we see that as probably the only technology or one of the few technologies that will help us get to the underserved parts of our community, the people that are disabled, old like me, and the folks that, that um, don't choose not to own a car or can't afford a car. You can get to that part of the community. The problem is the regulations don't address those vehicles. It's too heavy. And so under the NHTSA guidelines, you, anything under 2,500 production unit over two years, a speed of less than 35 miles an hour, but the weight is 3,000 pounds or less, it's really a golf cart for the neighborhood electric vehicle program. These vehicles weigh 6,000 pounds, 7,000 pounds, so they're, they're in a gray area. And so that's one of the things that we have to go to NHTSA for every one we bring into the country or we deploy. And that's probably not going to work into the future. And the other thing, and this is really a, a big, bigger issue, but it's data. And there's some data that's proprietary that the, the partners don't want to share. But imagine a day when instead of being reactive to safety issues, we're going to be proactive. So these vehicles, they can see at 360 degrees around them. They're gathering information. They can see where they're near misses. And so when I worked for Caltrans, what we did is you had accident concentration. You didn't get the near miss data. And so you just were very reactive. We want to be proactive and understand where those near misses are. So sharing of the data is going to be critical in the future. And lastly, I, I think just off the top of my head, procurement. So when you try to procure technology, it takes a while to go through that process. In the meantime, they're on version four and you're trying to procure version one. And that's going to be a problem, I think, in the future with the rapid pace of deployment of this technology. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Schuster. Uh, thank you.